in this video we will try to understand what exactly is WCF REST service. Now in order to understand WCF REST service the first thing is we need to understand what exactly is REST. So once we understand the fundamental of REST you know then we will see what exactly is WCF REST service and then we'll see a small small sample of how to implement REST using WCF services. So let's first start with the full form the most uh, easiest thing. REST stands for representational state transfer. If we try to simplify REST further we can say REST is nothing but using the current features of the web in a simple and effective way. Now some of the amazing features of the web are first the 40 years old matured and widely accepted HTTP protocol that's the first uh, you know thing which REST actually uh, takes from the 40 years old web. Second this HTTP protocol has standard unified methods like post, get, put and delete. Third, HTTP protocol is stateless. Fourth, the URI that is a uniform resource identifier by which you can go and locate any uh, resource on the web. So what REST does is it takes these four things you know from the 40 years old web and applies certain principles on them and, and, and that's what is called as REST. So let's define REST in official words. REST is nothing but it is an architectural style. Please note, I'm just stressing this word. It's an architectural style built on certain principles using the current HTTP web fundamentals. Now, let's spend some time here talking about this word architectural style because I think it needs more clarification. Now, there are three things you know which are confusing. One is architectural style. The other one is architectural patterns. And the last one is design patterns. Architectural style means it's a, it's a concept. It's a theory. Now, how you take this theory and implement is implement it is all up to you. For example, when we say layered architecture, somebody can take that layered architecture and and use web services, uh, use a class or use components, whatever it is. It's all up to up to him. You know how do you how does he take a layered service and 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 builds his implementation. So, like example, three tire is an architectural style. Okay, or service oriented architecture is an architectural style, rest is an architectural style. So these are concepts and how you take this concept and implement is all up to you. Architectural patterns means you know they describe solution at the subsystem level or at the module level. So when we say that okay this is an uh, architectural pattern, in, in other words we talk about components, we talk about subsystems and how, how they interact with each other. For example, model view controller I think is an architectural pattern which talks about how the view interacts with model and how the model interacts with you know. Uh, uh, controller etc okay design patterns is solution at the code level in other words it talks about classes it talks about functions it talks about how actually the logic flows so really depending on what kind of depth you are talking about you know these three things uh, you know uh, they, they lie you know in, in their own category so rest is an architectural style in other words it's a concept and and this concept how you implement it is all up to you now let me add you know one more point here you know regarding the architecture style architecture style can also be implemented outside the software world for, world. for example when we talk about rest right we can take rest and implement it for a postal service if you wish so uh, when we talk about architecture style it's really really very very generic you know it it also uh, applies outside the software world but currently you know we are going to talk about rest web services in other words we are going to talk about rest in terms of software world only now there are five basic fundamentals of HTTP web you know which are leveraged to create REST services. So let's go through each of these fundamentals you know one by one. The first important fundamental in REST is everything is a resource. Now when we talk about internet it is all about getting data. Now this data can be in a format of a web page, it can be an image, it can be a video, file etc etc. It can also be a dynamic output like you know get some customer data who are uh, newly subscribed or whatever it is. So the first important point in REST is start thinking in terms of resources, you know, rather than physical files or, you know, SQL server data or whatever it is. Okay. So for example, uh, you know, below are some example of how a resource would look like. If I want an image resource, you know, then it will be www.questmon.com slash image.logo.gif. You know, so this is an image resource. If it's a dynamically pulled resource, you know, then it can be www.questmon.com slash customer1001. If it's a video resource, it can be something else. If it's a static resource, it can be something else. But whatever it is, at the end of the day, in REST, everything is a resource uh, or whatever data you want from the net is a resource, you know, when you look from the REST point of view. So that's the first important fundamental. The second principle of REST says that every resource is identified by a unique identifier. Now, if you look at the old web, 
it identifies all resources by a URL. For example, uh, let's say that you want to display customer with their orders. Probably you will use www.questpond.com slash display customer and order.aspx. Now in rest, you know, we add one more constraint to the current URI saying that every URI should uniquely represent every resource data. In other words, if I want to get customer details of Shiv, you know, then I will say www.questpond.com slash customer slash Shiv. If you want to get customer details of Raju, then I will append Raju at the end. If I, if I want to get orders from Shiv, what, what kind of orders, you know, uh, Shiv has placed, then I will say www.questpond.com slash customer slash Shiv slash orders. So rather than, you know, pointing towards a generic page like this, you know, in, in rest, you know, we actually point uh, to a unique identifier by which we can go and identify that data. So this is the second principle uh, which, which we need to remember when we implement REST. The third principle of REST says use simple and uniform interfaces. Now remember that simplification is a way to success and that's what exactly is the goal of uniform interfaces here. Now when external clients are interacting with your uh, with your service, right, you know, they expect simplified interfaces. For instance, Let's say that you have a you have customer and orders data which you have exposed on the web, and uh, and and these are some of the function names you know by which external clients can communicate to your application. So, for example, if they want to add a customer, they can go and call the add customer function. If they want to go and add orders, they can use insert orders. If they want to go and select a customer, they can use select customer. Now, if you closely watch, right, the above method names looks inconsistent and difficult to remember, right? Now, that's what REST says. REST says that keep your interfaces uniform and simple and this can be achieved by using uniform methods of HTTP protocol and combining the name with your resource operations. So if you look at the HTTP protocol it has it has a lot of common methods uh, you know for creating updating and deleting a resource. Now as we said previously that everything is a resource so resource right and on the web you know what you do is that you primarily do you know four operations uh, on the resource first is you would like to get a resource second is you'd like to probably uh, go and create or update a resource third is is you know you'd like to go and delete a resource you know the last one is you know probably you'd like to go and post some information at the resource so if you look at http web you know which has been matured for 40 years these four methods in http web allows us to you know do these operations so for example the http get you know gets a resource the http put actually creates and updates a resource the http delete deletes a resource http post you know actually submits a uh, data to the resource so if you can take these 40 years old methods you know which are now so famous and combine it with your resource you know then your uh, un your interfaces can be made can be made uniform so now if you combine the standard HTTP methods, you know, with your resource names, you know, you can have uniform interfaces. For example, here you can see uh, we have an add customer function. So what I've done is I have exposed a URL outside saying customer slash shiv. And if anybody calls a put on this URL, you know, he'll actually go and add shiv, you know, to the customers. In the same way, if, you're, if I want to get some customer uh, data, I can say customer slash shiv and do a HTTP get on that. So by combining the HTTP methods, you know, with the URL names, I can have more unified interfaces. So in other words, uh, uniform interfaces is nothing but basically combination of your old HTTP protocol methods that is post, get, put, delete with your resource names. And by doing this, what you achieve is simplified communication. So this is the third important principle of REST. You know, keep your interfaces simple. The fourth principle for rest is all communications are done via representations so in other words you know you have a client and you have a server and uh, inside the server there are resources so whenever client sends any data to the server and server then sends a response of the resource everything is done via representations so any kind of request and response which goes from the client to the server and back again are nothing but representations for example, let's say that you want to create a new customer record. So what you can do is you can send some kind of a representation uh, as shown on the video above. And uh, probably you can send this representation by using HTTP put. Now, once the resource is created, you know, probably you can, you would get a representation something like this. Now, this representation is a response which has come back from the server saying that, yes, you know, uh, the customer uh, quest point has been successfully created. And if you wish, you know, you can, uh, go and uh, you know use the next URL here which is defined and create orders if you want for the quest point customer 
so now the above representation you know it was in XML format if you want you can also uh, send representations uh, using other formats like JSON so for example you know if you want to go and create a new customer record using JSON then probably you would send something like this and probably for this uh, what you call request representation probably you will get a re response representation which can be in XML format or it can be in a JSON format so at the end of the day all request and response which takes place uh, you know between client and servers are called as representation so this is the fourth principle of rest that everything is a representation which is sent uh, you know via the request and you whatever you get via the response and the fifth principle is be stateless every request should be an independent request so that we can scale up using load balancers etc independent request means you know with the data you also send the state of the request you know so that the server can carry forward the same for the for the next level if he wishes for instance let's say you know here's a here's a simple representation we have now this representation actually sends in a user id and a password uh, to a system so that you know it can be validated now if the user id and password is successfully validated probably you will get a representation something like this saying that you know that the login was successful and and that's a response representation you have got back now let's say you want to go and search customer so now when you send a representation now with that representation you will also also say that currently you are logged in successfully so in other words you are logged in successfully and uh, uh, and and you know do not again ask me for a user id and password so in other words you know probably you will set some some kind of flag like here saying that you know i was successfully logged in don't again ask me for a user id and password so in other words every request is independent and the server does not need to remember what you did in your previous request so the fifth important principle of rest is be stateless so finally summarizing rest is the architectural style which uses the old 40 years http web and it applies five principles on the top of it first one is think in terms of resources there is nothing called as database data or image data just everything is a resource every resource whichever resource you want to access is access accessed by a unique identifier third is keep your interfaces simple and uniform by using the http methods like get post delete etc fourth is you know whenever you uh, send request and response you are actually sending representations and you get representations and the last one is be stateless as far as possible now the next question which comes to our mind is okay now these are the five principles of rest so how do we implement you know these principles in wcf services and create wcf rest services now whatever video you have seen right is just a glimpse of uh, what we have done so in case you are interested in our video package uh, you can go to our site that is www.questpond.com you can call on this number and you can ask the the complete dvd package what we have so in this dvd package what we have done is basically we have covered almost everything what a dotnet developer wants so right from basics of uh, asp.net object programming sql server to new technologies like wcf silverlight link azure entity framework uh, we also have UML uh, architecture, estimation, project management. There is a complete invoicing project end to end which is covered so that you can get a better feel of how to actually create projects in a systematic manner. Uh, we have covered server products, you know, both for SharePoint 2007 as well as for 2010. We have a lot of best practices video on SQL Server, etc. So this complete package, you know, you can get from www.questpond.com if you're interested and you can call on this number and uh, you can ask for the rates it's it's a very uh, decent rate what we have on the same in the same way uh, you know as compared to the videos we also have one more uh, product with us that is our interview question books so we have uh, different kinds of interview question books you know right from from dotnet interview questions to sql server interview questions uh, SharePoint interview questions, BizTalk interview questions, etc. So, in case you are interested in the books part, you can you can call on these numbers as per your location. So, you can see these numbers on the board at this moment. So, I hope that um, you keep enjoying the videos, uh, you keep seeing our uh, site, and I hope that you gain more knowledge. Thank you very much.